Hi, this is David Maloney from Small Business Plan. Today I'm going to show you how to make a favicon. That is, the little website icon that appears in your address bar. Now in order to create a favicon, you need to decide on the design of your favicon. Now I've discussed this in my previous article, which you can visit below. This article has another video which explores possible favicon designs which utilize your logo, your business name, your business category, your primary product, your mascot or your brand colors and it also shows examples of 15 successful brand names and the favicons that they've used. Now because all website browsers are different there can be compatibility issues from time to time. To ensure your favicon is compatible with all website browsers it's best to use the icon format which is the .ico format. The two steps to creating a favicon is then creating your artwork in paint.net and once you save this artwork then it's a case of uploading it to another website called Dynamic Drive which will automatically convert your JPEG or GIF file to the .ico format. So let's jump into paint.net. So we're here in paint.net now today I'm going to show you two possible favicon designs that I could have used. One of those designs will feature the icon itself and the other design will feature the S in small. Now the first step would be to create a new canvas. This is so we don't damage the original logo file. So it's just a case of file new. And really the size of this canvas doesn't matter much. So just select OK. And you'll notice up the top here our blank canvas is side by side with our logo. What I'll do now is I'll just go back to the logo using the select door, control A to select all and then control C to copy. So that's currently copied in our cache. Then move back to the new canvas and control V. Paint.net may ask you whether you wish to expand the canvas or keep the canvas the same size. Now at this stage it's fine to select expand canvas because we're really just using this canvas as a working file. So expand canvas and the logo has been dropped on the canvas. Now you'll notice it's a bit large so I'll just select the magnifying glass and right click to zoom out. And now since our first favicon is going to feature the icon it's just a case of isolating that icon from the logo. So again select the selector tool and just control D to deselect that option and, and click and drag so you've got a nice square because again a favicon is a square design and let go and once you're happy with that you go up here to image crop to selection and I'm quite happy with that design so what I'll do now is I'll just save it as a paint.net file so file save as paint.net which is a .pdn file I'll just call this favicon icon. So now I have the artwork saved. It's a matter of saving the file as an image file. Because the design is going to be so small, I recommend that you use a GIF because the GIF file format maintains crisper edges around small images, whereas JPEGs can be a bit grainy. So what I will do now is I'll just save this again. File save as, but this time, I'll save it as a GIF file and save and OK. What I'll do now is just jump into the dynamic drive site which will convert my picture to a .icon file. So here at dynamic drive it's a matter of selecting the file. If you're unsure which file it is just change it to details and you've got the favicon.icon, you can see it's a GIF file, so it's a case of selecting that. Then simply pressing the create icon button. And you'll see below there's a sample of your favicon. If I'm happy with that, I select download favicon. And I've just created my first favicon. So that's the first favicon, let's create a second example. So I'll just create a new canvas. Okay, and again, copy the small business plan logo into the canvas and zoom out. Now I'm going to focus on using the S so I'll just use the selector 
make sure my selection mode is on replace and I'll select the S and then I will select crop to selection now to make it easier to work with the S I'm just going to duplicate it as a layer so you push the duplicate button I'm going to rename this uh, capital S and with the background I'm just going to go back and delete the background so I select the background layer and the selection tool and click and drag the whole lot and push delete that means there's nothing on the background layer so if I make the the S layer invisible you'll see there's nothing underneath it it just makes it easier to work with for argument's sake I'll just add another circle so in this case I do create new layer and I'll just I'll leave that underneath the S I'll, I'll move that to the top of the S actually just for argument's sake and double click whenever you create whenever you create a new layer always rename it instantly I'll call this one circle and then what I will do is I'll select the circle tool down the bottom left and I'm going to draw a filled shape with outline so what that means is it's going to be filled with one of the colors here and the other color is going to be the outline now to keep my branding consistent I'm going to look to use the colors I already have so I'll just go back to my logo by clicking on the logo canvas then I'll click on the color picker and I will select this color here and you'll notice when I select it the primary color changes like that and I'm going to change that color to a black and I can do that by right clicking on the black so now I'll return to my canvas select the circle and in order to draw a perfect circle you hold the shift key Oops, I've got the colors in reverse <laughs> I'll just flip them around by clicking the reverse button so you hold the shift key and you might take a few goes so control Z to undo no I'm not happy with that either I think that looks pretty good and you can adjust the width of the circle as well by using the brush width up here so once I'm happy with that I'll just move it around to a more central position and then I'll move it below the S by clicking move layer down so now the circle is below the S but you can't actually see the circle this is because the S has a white background so we need to remove the white background the best way of doing this is with the magic wand which is over here so once you've selected it just deselect the automatic selection by clicking control D now the magic wand works by selecting like colors since I want to remove the white background it's a case of clicking on the white and having that all selected and then simply pushing delete and you'll see now that the circle is visible because I've removed the white background from the S now the tolerance of the magic wand can be set so just experimenting by increasing the tolerance by clicking but 50% is usually a good guide once I'm happy control D to deselect save the artwork as a paint.net file again I'll call this favicon s and now I will save that as a gif so file save as change to gif okay okay and you'll be met with this option whenever you're trying to save an image in paint.net which has multiple layers such as this one so you can see on your layers palette you have three layers paint.net will tell you that it's going to flatten the layers now this is just a necessary step so for now just click on flatten the file will be generated and you'll notice all the layers have been consolidated to one layer so as soon as your artwork file saved just do control Z which is undo and that will unflatten your layers so you'll be able to select them all individually now returning to the dynamic drive site it's a case of selecting the new icon which is favicon s create icon and a preview of the icon is shown and that's how to create a favicon for more tips check out my site at smallbusinessplanned.com